Well, good Tuesday morning to you folks. Hopefully things are going well with you. I hope you had a good night's rest and you are ready to face the day. I'm going to read to you today from Revival Today. Now this book uh, being titled Revival Today, and this is Valentine's Day, February the 14th, but we're going to go to February 4th, 1905. Can Revival Take Place in Our Generation? Hosea 6.1, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. The average Christian today has become a fatalist when it comes to revival. We have become convinced that great movements or revival awakenings are part of the historical record of Christianity, but are impossible in any part of the foreseeable future. We have believed that what God has performed in the past is no longer available to us today. One of the greatest revival crusades in history began with an average attendance of 5,500 people per service. Between the singing of Charles Alexander and the preaching of R.A. Torrey, London had not seen anything like them since Moody and Sankey or Wesley or Whitfield. The power of this revival team came only uh, can only be described by the amazing results of this crusade. It is estimated that around one million one hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred and fifty Englishmen attended the two hundred and two meetings. Over seventeen thousand professions of faith resulted from Tory and Alexander's efforts. One writer proclaimed it seemed as if all London was singing revival hymns. Our hearts should be stirred by stories such as these. They remind us that God is not dead and he can do much more than we can ask or think. Can God repeat these outpourings of his blessings and power? Will he, the answer depends in large, part on us. Will we return unto the Lord in our generation? Will we seek him? <clears throat> Will we humble ourselves? Will we pray? Will we turn from sin and make things right with God and one another? Instead of wondering if God will do his part, our focus should be on the responsibility we have as individuals to do our part. What step does God want us to take today to put yourself in a condition for God to send a powerful revival to our generation? <clears throat> well, um, the other night at our church service, I'd mentioned um, if, if you, of course, being on social media, you can uh, see some of the things that are happening uh, around the nation. You can always look and see trouble and see problems and see uh, trials um, but I'm talking about churches, people that are being revived. And, um, I was thinking, uh, as I mentioned to our church about there in, uh, Asbury, uh, seminary there, if you would look at, uh, the uh, college in Wilmore and you could go online and look, uh, just look at that, type that in and see what is happening there. Um, on the college campus that happened in 1970, and they say again, uh, just in the past week, young people that are calling out to God. And one of the young man's testimonies I watched, he said, uh, they drove six hours to get there because he said, if Jesus Christ sat on a throne, localized throne here where we could drive to it, we would be interested. So he and a few of his friends drove six hours to get to uh, Asbury College there in Wilmore, Kentucky. And he said, and when we arrived, he said, um, he said, it was as if God said to me, go to the altar. He said, I don't want to go to the altar. But God told him to go. He said, look beside you. And he said, he looked and there was an older, uh, there was a young woman praying with an older a 
a woman. Then he said, look to the other side. There was a young man praying with an older man. Look in front of you, and he saw people praying. Look behind you, and he saw people praying. He said, that's what God wants you to do. He just wants revival to start with ordinary people. It doesn't have to be anything made up. And uh, So, yes, I believe revival can come today. But like I told our church, it comes at the cost or the expense of uh, putting ourselves where we need to be and uh, it does cost uh, it doesn't come free it is to deny ourselves and to pray uh, not that God would bless us but maybe pray that we would bless him so however you however you think of it uh, we got a Saturday night service this weekend we call the third Saturday night of the month at our church Saturday night revival and we have a service but uh, we had great services on Sunday and we're praying for God to bless uh, tomorrow evening and uh, on through to revive us. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. And the glory revive us again revive us again fill each heart with thy love may each soul be rekindled with fire from above hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again Lord we pray that you will revive us uh, give us the help and the strength that we need um, to show others the love of Christ that they may be drawn to you as well we love you and we thank you for all you do for us in Jesus name Amen. God bless you folks. See you Wednesday.